It was a bright early spring morning. Still feeling a little sleepy, Mr. Fox opened his eyes and got out of bed. Since the weather was beautiful outside and awfully tempting, Mr. Fox decided to go for a walk in the jungle. The sun was shining, the birds were twittering, it was a very peaceful morning. Well, sort of. Worried huh? that something terrible could have happened to one of the animals in the jungle, Mr. Fox sprinted towards the sound. Are you kidding me? You're the size of an air balloon! Are you making fun of my size, you piece of you? What? Take that back now, you... No! I'll never take it back! This was all your fault! No, it wasn't! It was yours! No, no! It's always your fault! Now, now, calm down! Oh, Mr. Fox, I'm so glad you passed by. You're the only one that could solve my problem. Solve your problem? No, Mr. Fox will solve our problem. No way! What you did was a total crime. So not true! You're the one who started it all and injured me, you big There, there, calm down. And just tell me what happened. Please he squeeze me! Up. Slow down, one at a time. Mr. Panda, you go first. Thank you. Now I was walking heading to my house when I realized that for me to get there, it will take me 12 minutes. And I was so tired and sleepy. So I thought about it and I realized I should just lay here for a while and take a short nap. And just as I was starting to get comfortable, I found little chicklets screaming with the high speech into my ears, Mr. Fox. My ears! Can you believe that? Well, that's not a very nice thing to do, little chicklets. Why did you do that? But I didn't, Mr. Fox. And how is that? I was heading to my favorite lake, and I was walking just right behind Mr. Wicks, when all of a sudden, out of nowhere, he decided to lay down and fell to the ground and squeezed my beautiful wing. And if it wasn't for my high-pitched voice, I would have been dead by now. Well, that was pretty dangerous, Mr. Wicks. What should I do, Mr. Fox? I was really tired and I needed my nap, so I took it. What should a panda do to take his nap? Can't you just wait till you reach your own house? Or at least look behind you before you decide to fall down? My house is 12 minutes away, and all the walking had already stolen away all my energy. I had to take a nap to recharge. I can't keep on walking forever. Then look behind you or sleep next to a tree or something. Why don't you watch where you're stepping? Hmm. It was a very troubling matter indeed. The little chick almost got crushed. But Mr. Wicks didn't mean it. He was just so tired that he fell asleep. Right? Mr. Wicks, answer me. Did you intend to squeeze little chicklet's wings? Of course I didn't. Were you aware that you were going to take a nap in the middle of the road? Actually, I vividly remember. I walked to the tree side first, but when I woke up, I found myself in the middle of the road. How many naps do you need per day? From five to seven, I would say. Did you take a nap before you decided to head home? Of course. Do you usually nap in between? Not always, but today I went so far from my house. I tried to hurry to nap at home, but you know, I'm too slow. Say no more. I now know the answer. Really? Yes. Worry no more, little chicklets. From now on, Mr. Wicks will always nap at his own house. Just a second. Aha, there it is. Is that what they call caffeine? My, I didn't think it was that huge. <laughs> No, no, no. It's something even better. Better than caffeine? And chocolates too. Wow! wow. Roller blades! So you'll be able to move fast and reach your house as fast as you can. 
Oh, oh, can I throw it now? Sure you can. Wow. <laughs> Whee! Yahoo! Thank you, Mr. Fox. Anytime you need me, I'll be there. One cold morning, while everyone was shivering in their houses, Mr. Fox woke up and went to watch his favorite hmm. team play. Who could it be so early? Wait a second, I'll be right there! Good morning, Woody. How are you? It's been a long time since we last met. Oh, Mr. Fox, it has been a while. Tell me, have you finished building Nate's ship? Yes, Mr. Fox. I used teak and bamboo. Nate liked it a lot. He took it out on a trip. He and his friends had so much fun. Great! Um, Mr. Fox, I noticed how beautiful your flowers look. You take really good care of them. Of course. And you know what? I'll tell you everything I know about flowers. Really? Thank you, Mr. Fox. Come in and have a seat while we talk. Okay. Woody followed Mr. Fox inside. Feeling a little cold, he waited patiently while Mr. Fox prepared two nice bowls of hot soup for them both. Here you go. Thank you. It's delicious. Glad you liked it. Now tell me, what's bothering you, Woody? How did you know that something was bothering me? I know you all too well, my friend. Okay. You know, it's really nice and warm here. Yes. Warm weather helps me think and relax. Well, Mr. Fox, I'm sure you know that I've been a carpenter for a long time now. Of course. And during the winter, my business blooms and my customers increase because I sell them the wood they use for their fireplace. Very good, but where's the problem? The problem is, they're not all the same. So each customer needs the wood to be suitable in size for his fireplace. That's true. And as you know, I work alone. So I take so much time and effort to cut and adjust the wood to suit each and every customer in this jungle. Hmm. Sounds like a serious problem. He looks really worried. Okay, Woody, why don't you come with me to my workshop? It's round the back. There, we can think together and I can invent something to help you solve your problem. I really hope so, Mr. Fox. Don't worry, we will. I know. And you taught me that there's a solution to every problem. And Mr. Fox... Solves every, every problem! problem. <laughs> That's right, Woody. I will invent a gigantic woodcutting machine that has the ability to choose and control the size and shape of your wood depending on what you need. What? Really? Aw, oh, you're the best, Mr. Fox. I'm just going to need some time to build the machine. You got it, Mr. Fox. I'll go get a few things done and I'll come back. Okay, I'll see you then, Woody. <laughs> Mr. Fox started designing his cutting-edge invention. He knew that is exactly what Woody needed to help him with his carpenting business. And because he was making this device for Woody, he thought he'd add a bit of color to make it all even more special. Finally! This is it! Mr. Fox's size-adjusting woodcutting machine! Thank you. 
After finishing the device, Mr. Fox sat to listen to his favorite music, waiting for Woody, who came knocking on the door. Hello, Woody. You're right on time. Have you finished building the new machine for me, Mr. Fox? Of course I have. It's in my workshop. Let's go see it. How to thank you, Mr. Fox. I'm really grateful for what you've done. Don't thank me. I only did what I had to do. I'd better be off now to cut more and more wood. Have a wonderful evening, Mr. Fox, and thank you again. Good night, Woody. See you soon. should have been here by now. He was supposed to get me some sugar candies from the other side of the river. I can't cross that river on my own. I can't swim. I'd better go to Mr. Fox. He'll tell me what to do. And since Mr. Fox helped many more, she went to him and knocked on his door. There? Over here, Mr. Fox. Oh, little Auntie Lou. Welcome. Please come in. Thank you, Mr. Fox. What can I do for you? Mr. Fox, my problem might seem small, and I know how busy you are, but... Don't worry, Auntie Lou. Whatever it is, we'll find a solution. Tell me, what's bothering you? Sugar candies. Sugar candies? But you love them. Yes, Mr. Fox, I do. That's the problem. The only place I can find them is by the other end of the river side. And I don't know how to swim. Well, how did you get them before? I had some friends who would cross the river and bring me some candies with them. But I can't wait for them to go every time. I want to be able to get them myself. I see. So you want a way to cross that river by yourself? Yes. Do you want to learn how to swim? Impossible. I'm so afraid of the water. It's my worst nightmare. Isn't there any other way, Mr. Fox? Sure there is. Let me think. Mr. Fox thought quickly and without delay, for there was already another way. He'll build a bridge for Auntie Lou, so she could cross whenever she wanted to. Little Auntie Lou? How wide is that river? Very wide, Mr. Fox. Hmm, it won't be easy, but let's go. Into the workshop ran Mr. Fox. He grabbed some wood and his toolbox. He put them in his Jeep and hopped inside. Then he and Auntie Lou went for a ride. Little Auntie Lou, that's not a very wide river. But it is to me, Mr. Fox. You're only saying that because you're too big. Maybe you're right. Little Auntie Lou, let's get started. Finally! The bridge is complete. Mr. Fox, that's exactly what I wanted. Thank you so much. I'd better be on my way to collect the sugar candies. I've always dreamed of this. Mm -hmm. 
Enjoy the candy, little Auntie Lou. After giving his friend a happy end to the day, Mr. Fox took his car and carefully drove away. Jumbo's birthday. He was dancing and playing with his friends, hoping this day would never end. Everyone ran to hide all the same, but Jumbo slipped and fell. And that was the end of the game. heard the fall, but Mommy Jumbo ran before them all. <gasps> Jumbo! Oh, Jumbo. Combo, you have to take him to Mr. Fox immediately. So, without further delay, off to Mr. Fox's house, they hurried away. Hey, Mrs. Combo, what's wrong? Help me, Mr. Fox. Jumbo is ill. Oh, please come in. You look cold, Jumbo. I'll get you something hot to drink. Thank you, Mr. Fox. We're celebrating Jumbo's birthday. Oh, happy birthday, Jumbo! Thank you, Mr. Fox. But as he was playing with his friends, he slipped and fell into the pond. He started shivering and sneezing. I feared he might be sick, so I thought I should bring him to you, just in case. Well, why don't you lie down, Jumbo, and let's take your temperature. Open your mouth, say, ah! Ah! Fever, stuffy nose, red dots all over his trunk. It's definitely Sniffles. Oh my, Sniffles? Don't worry, Mrs. Combo. It's just a Sniffles fever. It will go away. All you need, champ, is some rest and just one pill of antidote. And when you're better, you can go back to play with your friends. Thank you, Mr. Fox. After thanking Mr. Fox, Mrs. Combo took Jumbo back home to let him rest. All right, Jumbo. Now all you need to do is follow Mr. Fox's advice and keep Mr. Thermometer under... Uh, under... Under my tongue? To find out if I'm all better so I can go outside and play with my friends? But first, you gotta... So I, uh, gotta... Uh, <laughs> keep my thermometer in my mouth? Right, son. You can count on me. Now, you'll stay put and... Uh, I add... Uh, <laughs> oh, sorry. Call me when it beeps. Frisky, how are you? Hi, Mr. Fox. Roo and I were playing and I'm about to win! Listen, Frisky, I'm going to visit Jumbo now and check on him. I'm sure he'd be really happy if you and Roo come with me. What do you think? Great idea, Mr. Fox. I want to check on him too. We'll meet you there. 
As agreed, Mr. Fox met Frisky and Roo at Jumbo's house. I'm coming. Hello, Mrs. Combo. We came to check on Jumbo. I hope he's feeling better now. Why, yes, Mr. Fox. Come in, everyone. Hey, Jumbo! I came to check on you. And I brought your friends along too. Are you feeling better now? Hi, Mr. Fox. Hi, guys. Hey, Jumbo. How are you feeling? Well, I feel better, but... Well, we need to take your temperature one more time, Jumbo. Is it time? It's time, all right. What does it say? Well, let's see. Your temperature is, um... Oh... Your temperature is just fine and dandy, Jumbo. You're not sick anymore. You are A-OK. -okay. Yes! Now we can go outside and play. But first, I need to tell Mom. Mom? Mom? Where could she be? She's not in the kitchen. Mom? She's not in the living room. I wonder where she is. I'm here, in the bedroom. What? <laughs> Mom, are you okay? I think I might have caught a case of sniffles too. What? <laughs> Don't worry, dear. I'll... Uh, I'll... Uh, <laughs> I'll be fine. Now why don't you go out and play hopscotch with your friends? I'll join you when I get better. But Mom, I won't be happy if I go to play and leave you here all by yourself. I'll be only thinking of you. So? What do you think you should do, little Jumbo? I have to sit here and take care of you, Mommy. You always take care of me when I get sick. I'll take care of you and never leave you alone. Oh, I love you more than anything in the whole wide world, Jumbo. Now it's time to take your temperature. Right, Mr. Fox? You're absolutely right, Jumbo. So rather than go out to play, by his mother's side, he decided to stay. It was a bright early morning. <sighs> Mr. Fox woke up and went to wash his face. Since he was feeling a little hungry, he went to prepare some breakfast. He prepared fruits, some cheese, a fried egg, and some veggies. He looked around for some bread, but couldn't find any. No problem. He'll go to the bakery and buy some. I guess I need to buy some bread from Mrs. Lute's bakery. Then I can have my delicious meal. Ah, I'm very hungry. I'm sure glad the bakery is close by. I won't be needing my car. Mr. Fox decided to walk to the bakery. He really enjoyed the early morning breeze. And on his way... Good morning, Mr. Fox! Oh, Mr. Falcon! How are you? Are you getting enough sleep? Yes, I can sleep most anywhere now. And it's all thanks to you, Mr. Fox. Glad to hear that, my friend. See you around.
When Mr. Fox finally reached Mrs. Flute's bakery, he found a long line of customers. He got in line and patiently waited his turn. Wow! Looks like everyone wants bread. Slowly, the line was moving up, and Mr. Fox got closer and closer till he finally reached the counter, where a very tired Mrs. Flutes was waiting. He was her last customer. Hello, Mr. Fox. Here you go. Hello, Mrs. Flutes. You look really tired. Yes, Mr. Fox. It's becoming more and more exhausting. Why? The number of customers has increased lately. After I upgraded both the bakery and the quality of the bread that I produce. That's great. I know it's great, Mr. Fox. But the thing is, the rate of bread production is really low. Well, compared to the number of customers, that is. But why is the rate of production low? Well, Mr. Fox, grinding the wheat takes loads of time and effort. Sometimes it takes over a day or so. That's basically why everything else gets delayed. Hmm. What should we do to solve this problem? Okay, Mrs. Lutz, I will head home now and eat my breakfast and try to think of a solution. And I'd like you to pass by my house tonight. I'm sure I'd figure something out by then. Really, Mr. Fox? I can't wait to hear your solution. I'll come by your house as soon as I get off work. Okay. See you later, Miss Flutes. See you later, Mr. Fox. Mr. Fox went back home to have his breakfast. Mmm, Miss Flutes' bakery is truly the best. I have to solve this problem, or she won't be selling any more delicious bread. With that in mind, Mr. Fox went to his workshop to give it some thought. Finally, he had a great idea. That was a long day. I should head straight for Mr. Fox. I'm sure he would have solved my problem by now. That must be Miss Flutes. Hello, Miss Flutes. Come inside. Hello. Were you able to find a solution to my problem, Mr. Fox? Well, why don't you try this new invention? A new invention for me? That's right. I made it specially for you. That's wonderful. It's a grinding machine to help you grind wheat quickly. Brilliant. But how will it help me? This machine is used to increase the rate of grinding the wheat, which is used to make the bread. So you can use it to grind a whole kilogram in no more than five minutes. And with that, the amount of time needed will decrease, and you won't be too exhausted. I'm really grateful to you, Mr. Fox. I have no words to express my gratitude. Friends help each other, Miss Flutes. You're really kind and generous, Mr. Fox. I want you to start using this new device tomorrow. And I will call you to check in every once in a while. Okay, Mr. Fox, I will. <laughs> I'll be going now. Thank you again. Goodbye, Miss Lutz, and have a good night. And so, Mr. Fox waved goodbye to Mrs. Flutes. Then, he sat on his comfortable sofa. He looked out his window and admired the jungle he lived in for so long. He happily thought to himself, I love helping my friends. Mr. Fox was known for his kindness in helping others. Everyone went to him for advice, even Woody, the jungle carpenter. After being assigned the task of building a really big ship, he went to Mr. Fox, seeking his wisdom. Mr. Fox listened carefully to what Woody had to say and in turn promised to help him. He started a research on shipbuilding and after hours and hours of hard work, he finally got it. 
Yes, I've got it. But there is something I need to check first. Mr. Fox went for a walk in the jungle, looking carefully at every tree on his path. Then he stopped in front of one and said, "Yes, that's the one." Immediately, Mr. Fox took a paint bucket. He wanted to mark the tree so he wouldn't forget which one it was. After that, he got into his car and drove off. When he got home, he called Woody to tell him that he had found the perfect solution to his problem. It only took a few minutes before. Oh, Woody, right on time. Come on, Mr. Fox, tell me. Okie dokie, come in. I finally figured it out. I never doubted you, Mr. Fox. I was sure you'd be the one to help me find an answer to my problem. Oh, don't mention it. Here you go. These are blueprints. They're guidelines that will help you learn how to build a ship easily. Woody started reading the blueprints thoroughly. He knew most of what was written in it. So he looked up and said, "It's a lot easier than I thought. Thank you so much, Mr. Fox." Oh, um, but Mr. Fox, what about the materials that I'll need to build it? Here's a list of all the materials you'll need. And what about the kind of wood I should use, Mr. Fox? I did extensive reading, and I found out that our ancestors were famous for using teak in the process of building ships, as it's really stiff, strong, and it can also be shaped to have wide planks, which would help the ship to withstand the waves of the sea. But I. I know you don't know what teak is. Not everyone does. But come along. I think it would be better to show you the tree I found earlier in the jungle. Our jungle? Of course. Everything you dream of can be found in our beautiful jungle. Mr. Fox got into his car with Woody by his side and drove off. They headed towards the tree that Mr. Fox had marked earlier. Here's the tree. Huh? I have loads of that wood in my store, but I never knew that I could use it to build ships. I didn't know about teak either, but with a little bit of research, everything is open to you, my friend. Mr. Fox, I can't thank you enough. I'm really happy right now. I'll never forget what you've done for me. It's my pleasure, Woody. Now that I know what I should do, I'll go back and start building that ship for Nate as fast as I could. Thank you again, Mr. Fox. So, after helping his friend, Mr. Fox got into his car and drove away happily. You know, it's true what they say: a friend in need is a friend indeed. <laughs>